Yo, GPJ here. Welcome to my channel. I was watching Gotcha Smack's video today regarding his uh, adventuring's true value, and I was a bit inspired to make this kind of video because, for the most part, I agree with most of his takes and his assessment regarding adventuring's value outside of sustaining and outside of, you know, being a sub DPS and also best in slot for follow up attack teams. I agree with many of that. I just find it interesting that a lot of people's perspective regarding a character is a bit skewed, especially with, you know, this, if you played his story and you've played the trial, you you have seen what he can do and you've known what he can do. Yet a lot of people tend tends to uh, to overhype him, saying that, oh, he's going to be, oh, he's going to be as a DPS that rivals the normal DPSs, or he's going to be the best in slot for Acheron. He, she, he's going to boost the damage of Acheron by like multiple folds. It's not. No, with the, with the release of Aventurine less than a week away, there's been a lot of, I would say, discourse regarding his true value outside of sustain. Because let's be honest here, he's, he's the best shielder in the game, bar none. Let's just say that right off the rip. The added bonus of him being a the best shielder in the game is he can apply debuff and he can assist follow-up attack teams. In fact, he is best in slot sustainer for follow-up attack teams. And he is a great sustain for the other team comps, the traditional DPS, the, the Acheron teams, the double DPS kind of character. But basically, people have been saying that, oh, he's going to be, you know, the second coming of sustained DPS. He's not. He's, he's not going to be. Let's just be real. Let's just be real right there. His value, though, as a sustain and people's expectation of him outside of being a sustain is skewed, to say the least. I'll give you like some examples in in the top of my head because you know he's not gonna be the best in slots sustained for every single team he's gonna be the best in slot sustained for follow-up attack teams if you're playing uh let's say someone like a, a dot team you have kafka and you have your dog and maybe you put in some a harmony support like like a ron may or maybe like a sparkle you know if you're feeling frisky you're not gonna put a venturine there he doesn't really offer anything outside of a shield to that specific opposition. What you will do, however, is put a Huo Huo there. Or if you're very, very much lacking in survivability, you put a Luo Cha there because his skill point positivity. You can't put a Venturine there because outside of his shield and follow-up attack, what is he going to do? He can't buff attack. He can give energy regen like Huo Huo can. And, you know, you can say that, oh, he's going to be skill point positive because he can trigger his follow-up attacks. Okay, but how? The only other follow-up attack unit in that specific dot comp is Kafka. And that will be an issue in making sure that his shields are stocked up only by using his talent. So that's one team comp. I can think of every single other team comp outside of follow-up attack that he will be great on due to his immense power as a sustainer, but outside of that, he's not gonna be the best. Aventurine's true value lies not in his sub-DPS capabilities, but by his supportive capabilities in a follow-up attack team. Let's say in, in the ideal follow-up attack team, you have like a, a ratio and you have a topaz. Topaz is a must in follow-up attack teams, and if people are saying otherwise, they are having an aneurysm. You put a Venturine there. Basically, you have a driver in Topaz, and you have ratio in being the source, main source of DPS because most of his damage is going to be from there. And then you have a Venturine. But let's assume you have E0 as 0 for on all of your teammates. That's fine. A Venturine has an added benefit of gaining more chances to do his follow-up attack thanks to both Topaz and Numbi and also Dr. Ratio. And let's not factor in the fact that if you're dealing with AoE heavy content where the enemy does multiple hits of AoE every single time. Let's say you fought like the, the blue dinosaur, I forgot his name. He has an extra turn mechanic where he will hit one of your teammates, good copy of Venturine, and then he will have like a, a bounce attack that hits random people. All right. Now, potentially, with that alone, you can get seven stacks, provided, of course, after in the first turn, you the dinosaur hit a Venturine. And then at the second turn, the dinosaur hit every single one of your teammates 
plus Aventurine. You get seven automatically. He does his follow-up attack. Gold's coming down from the sky. And then Numbi start going wild. And not to mention if you have like a, the ratio op applied on that dinosaur, you can get multiple roll, you can get multiple instances of damage of Numbi and on ratio thanks to a single trigger. His value in follow-up attack teams is the best, bar none, without question. Yet people seem still hyping him up saying that, oh, he's going to be best in slot sustain for multiple teams. It's not going to be like that. You can't have such a high expectation of characters outside of their respective classes. You can't expect a preservation character to hit as hard as a hunt or a destruction character. It's not. The added bonus of them outside of their respective roles, a great addition. And that is why most of the five star healers, the five star supports and the five star sustain have ad added benefits outside of their class. Back to the Hoho -ho example. She gives heals, best cleanse mechanic in the game due to the fact that it starts on the unit's turn and every single time the ultimate is used. That alone is making her worthy of being a top tier option for many people. But her drawbacks are there. The fact that she can't really heal that much, especially if you're fighting someone like a like the Sam, or if you have like uh like this meme, like you can't dodge it, you can only hope to delay it as much as possible. That is a clear significant drawback. Hoho's main role, remember, is to heal, but her added benefit is that she can support the team by giving attack percent buff and energy regen. Same goes with Aventurine. He's best role is to shield the team but his added benefit is applying debuffs and applying a follow-up attack which is beneficial for follow-up attack teams the most outside of that he's a great option in my opinion if you're going to pull for aventurine and you're having all these character expectations that are way way out of it like you know that it's unrealistic but you still keep going it's a very tall task and you're not going to be satisfied. Especially due to the fact that most of us have been playing the game since 1.0. And if you've played MOC or if you've played Simulated Universe, you've built many characters, including your sustain. If you have a top two, like top sustains already built up. Like let's say if you have a, a Locha and a Ho Ho. You're thinking to yourself, should you pull for adventure? In my opinion, if you like them, always go for it. If you like any unit that you like in the game, if you like them, Go for it. You're going to enjoy the game a lot more that way. But is he a must pull for you if you have that to sustain? Or let's say if let's drop the rarity down. Let's say if you have a well-built Lynx or and a well-built Gallagher. If you can clear full stars without Aventurine, then he's not going to be an added benefit to your account. Unless, again, you're going to be playing him in a, in a follow-up attack team. Essentially, people have this sort of unrealistic expectation regarding what a Ventrine can do. And it, why would you think about this like this? Come on, man. What's wrong with you? Bottom line, if you like the character, always pull for them. If you have an unrealistic expectations regarding what that character can do, then you're delusional. You should stick always to what the character can do in their respective class and treat what they can do outside of it as an added bonus. The most of the five stars that we have in the game are so good because they can do this one specific thing really well and they have an added benefit of being able to do things outside of their respective class. Bottom line, pull for who you like. Have realistic expectations regarding what character you pull. Anyway, that's it for me. Hope y'all enjoyed this random rant. Special shout out to Gotcha Smeg for inspiring me to make this kind of video. I'll leave the link in the description if you wanted to see what his perspective is on it. Make sure to leave a like, drop a subscribe on the video. And as always, see you soon. Bye bye.